Wah, imagine fuzz pedals, Wembley Stadium. Um, hi folks, welcome to Friday Night Live with me, Banjo Jen. Um, thought I'd hop on and do a bluesy tutorial. I'm feeling quite bluesy today. Um, I'm treating you because I've only just put up the three, four uh, tutorial, but thought I'd hop on and do a, a, a quick sort of blues one. This isn't going to be like technical musical theory blues. Um, you can look elsewhere for that. There are loads of videos on here that will explain what the blues scale is and why it is like it is. Um, I'm not going to go into any of that because I'm no expert on that at all. Uh, I'm just going to tell you what sounds cool and <laughs> then you can have a play around and try it. Um, there's things like minor thirds and all sorts of stuff that uh, we don't need to get into really but if you just have your banjo in open G uh, like we've always been in so far um, and then along this third fret you've got things that will sound very bluesy if you fret them as you play your string so if you play your bass string and then hammer on on that third fret that sounds really cool and bluesy and it's very different to we've been used to hammering on the second fret quite a lot on that string haven't we when we finish off phrases in g so things like um you know if we're you know, if we're doing a finishing thing, we've often gone dun, dun, to finish it off. And so if you're in a major um, G song, like using G, C and D mostly, you know, that, that second fret's going to be the one that you're using. But if you want it to sound more bluesy, this third fret means you, you're flattening the sort of third note, the minor um, version. It sounds really cool. So that works on the bass string, and then your next string up, your G string, the third string. Or next string down, I should say, shouldn't that? But anyway, you know what I mean? That middle one. Do, 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 that sounds cool as well on the third fret. So you can play around with. Do, 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 just those two strings and alternating, kind of going in and out of those hammer-ons and pull-offs and whatever, you know, just, just play around and it sounds really cool already just doing that. Um, anything you can do on your bass string, you can obviously do on your first string, because that should go the D, so um, third string, uh, sorry, third fret on the first string will sound cool as well. Okay, um, you'll be used to that from your G7, so any 7th chord sounds very bluesy, that's kind of used a lot in blues, so that G7 that you used to play in, you know, will sound cool putting that note in, um, and going up to your 5th fret, uh, you know, your sort of 1st um, string 5th fret, uh, really cool and then your second string first fret where your index finger would be in a C chord usually that kind of works as well with some of those notes so if you were doing do, 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 do. can't you that they all sound like they work quite well in quite a bluesy way together um, I'm not doing a, a, an actual scale there particularly I'm just sort of messing about with the notes that would be in that blues scale you know so you don't have to do anything in order but just knowing where those notes are is is cool and then you can play around and maybe kind of make stuff up with it um so a bit like we did in the uh, this trains bound for glory tutorial if you've done that one with me um if not have a look back through this channel there's there's one on this train is bound for glory and that one you know usually we're playing it very uh, major you know this train's bound for glory this train's train's bound for glory this train you know um but then we did a blues uh, chorus to it and i think that was uh, uh something like that anyway um i remember 
improvising a bit of a blues one during that tutorial but that was again using all those notes on that third fret so kind of if you if you want to slap in like a blues chorus into a normal major tune just by doing that across your G putting in some of those notes or if you're in your power D you know reaching across with your ring finger but on that third fret instead of hammering on maybe on the fourth fret where you might usually you know it's going to sound more bluesy on the third if you're in your C reaching across again to that string your third string third fret gives you your C seventh so all those things are going to sound bluesy your G7 you've got a C7 there as well because remember if you're in a bar chord and you reach three along just like your g7 is three along from the nut if you're bar in a c three along put your little finger down if you can be tricky it's going to give you your seventh sound so playing any of those notes across the third fret putting sevenths in it's going to sound bluesy so you could kind of make up something if you wanted with those notes um and that's what I did. So one of the first songs I wrote actually was Colour of the Devil. And there is a video here on YouTube on my other channel, on my Banjo Gen channel. So I'll put the um, link up at the end and you can maybe have a look at that. Um, in fact, you know, maybe I'll just go through it uh, quickly and then you can see if you can play along. Because that was one of the things that I, um, I really liked kind of as soon as I heard those blues notes and knew where I could put them. I was like, oh, I could, I could do something with that. I could, I could make my own song with that. Um, and what I also did was use a slide. Now, I am no expert at using a slide. So, again, you can look up other uh, tutorials on YouTube because they will explain um much better than me how to use a slide properly um but I did get one ready for you so this is mine it's like a glass slide you can get metal ones you can get glass ones you can get different thicknesses you can get different lengths there's, there's a whole load of things you can try out um a lot of people like to put it on their uh, little finger and sort of you know slide along with the little finger i I prefer it on my ring finger, which is a bit unusual, but it just works better for me because I find I sort of hold it in place with my little finger then and it leaves it still leaves the two fingers free to sort of do stuff. Um, but I find it's more secure when I've got it on my ring finger. But like I said, that is a bit weird. I've not seen many people play like that. So you just, you know, put it on both, see what feels right to you. Um, but basically with a with a slide, if you're if you're hitting a note, or sometimes you might want to hit a, a couple of notes at a time, because the nice thing about slide is you're not really necessarily needed to be really precise with your notes because you just want the slide sound. So you can kind of just hit the strings a little bit. Um, so if I'm aiming somewhere in the middle, like those middle strings, and I put the slide on my third fret and sort of slide it up to the fifth, you know you can you can hear that cool slide sound what you're not trying to do is push the slide really heavy onto the strings not like you sort of would if you were fretting a chord and wanting to put them right down onto the wood that's not the aim of a slide um, a slide you actually kind of glide along the surface of the strings a lot more so it's quite a light touch in fact um, you're not sort of pushing down on the strings that much it's it's more of a It's more of a light kind of uh, brush along the strings. I mean, I'm not playing anything here. I'm just sliding along because it sounds a bit rubbish, but <laughs> you get the idea. Um, and so what I noticed was um, when I was writing Call of the Devil, that you could um, sort of do a bit of a, a riff and then put that slide in. So I went... Um, so that's just a, a bum, two bum ditties. You know, this hand's not going to do anything weird. Um, so I'm going bass string and then middle string. But after the bass, I'm hammering on that third fret to give it that blues feel. So just try that. Hammer on the bass and then the middle string. Just your normal frailing strum. 
then for your next strike you're gonna stay on that middle string but as you strike you're gonna try and slide the sort of third to the fifth fret with that slide on it and then hit the string again um, just to finish off um ditty so the first bit is the hammer on middle and then slide on the middle and then just it the slides quick it doesn't stay there it just goes doo, 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 doo. so this one's just doing its frailing but this one's doing a slide on one of those frailing strikes okay gave me once I sort of worked out that little riff that I made up that that you know sort of set me in mind for a song so that that's how Colour of the Devil came about so that's the intro it like goes do, 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 do. and then it goes taking me down taking me down and then the next bit can't stop the devil from taking me down I use that um I use that note that we mentioned, uh, second string, first fret. I think a hammer on. So again, just this hand's just doing its frailing thing, but striking the second string and then hammering it on on that first fret. And then I do that same slide again. So it's. So that's how the sort of first bit came about. Taking me down, taking me down. Can't stop the devil from taking me down. <laughs> and then it repeats. Taking me down, taking me down. Can't stop the devil from taking me down. And then the verse just goes again up there. It used to be a... And then I go up to that seventh note on the first string. Good girl. Used to be a good girl. That's just uh, first string open, third string open. Used to be a good girl, never was a saint, but I used to be a good girl. Again, just hammering on that one, and then that slide again. Played it through straight, now he's taking me down, taking me down. Can't stop the devil from taking me down. And then it just does another bit. Used to know what bats was, used to have a gold. The scales they've tipped. repeats that smoking and drinking and painting the town painting it red back up to there letting it go painting it red back to the middle it's the color of the devil hammering on there again and then the slide again bernie's in my head color of the devil and he's in my head color of the devil hold it there and he's in and when I go ahead at the end of the chorus, I do a little riff on the bass and the third string. Do, 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 do. is just hammering on the bass like we were doing at first when we were just messing around with the blues um, notes just to hear what they sound like it's just a hammer on da, 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 da. so it's like hammer on the bass strum thumb hammer on uh, the uh, third string strum thumb da, 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 da. and then it's like a, I hit the third string but I hammer on the bass string on the third fret so that's where you've got those sort of phantom hammer-ons where you don't always have to hammer on the string that you've struck with this hand it might be a bit of a phantom one which is what that one is so i hit the open string in the middle but I hammer on the bass and then do the strum thumb loved that little riff so I do that sort of each time it kind of finishes the chorus so anyway have a listen to the song and see if you can play along the only thing is you will need a capo have I got one yes I have so um I am in a in the recording of that one um so just 
pop your capo on and I'm going to clip my fifth string under my railroad peg. You might have to just tune your uh, string up to A if you've not got the little railroad pegs or a fifth um, string capo. <laughs> usually goes a little bit sharp when you put a capo on you might have to retune a little bit um but yeah so I would have the capo there and then I'd be doing the same thing as I've just shown you but obviously we're now two frets up because we've put the capo on the second fret so now your third fret for the bluesy notes is is actually the fifth fret you know it's here now because uh, it's uh, three along from your capo so you know everything's going to be along that fret now and when you do your slide you know it's going to be that fret up to that one now all right but it's all the same do, 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 do. I'm not going to go through the whole song in detail um but that's the basic premise of it once you've got those sort of little bits you'll be able to work it out and sort of play along um in the sort of bridgey bit it goes so that's a bit more of a slide up to your your bar chord c so it goes to the C, then the B flat, and then open. So, you know, you don't have to play my song, you can make up your own, um, but that just gives you some ideas, you know, because that B flat and the C is gonna work really well. Sometimes up to the D. think I do that in Colour of the Devil, um, I can't remember, but um, you know, you could make up a song where you've got your, you know, your open strings and you're doing something bluesy, you know, and go up to your D, C, B flat and your open one, they're all going to work, any seventh chords are going to sound cool, um, so play around a little bit, you know, get yourself a slide, um, you can even make yourself one if you get a bit of metal tubing and chop it off, but I wouldn't recommend that because it's usually a bit rough and uh, may not be the right weight, it's quite nice to have a, a weight to it, um, so it's quite nice to get, I find the sort of thicker glass ones uh, are nice for me, this one is a two one two so it's a dunlop um and it just says two one two so that's obviously the size or the scale or whatever um i've left a little sticker on this time because my old one smashed and then i didn't remember what size it was and i had to faff about trying to find the right one so now i know it's two one two um but yeah you might be able to go to the music shop and try a few out and um or order a couple of different ones online and, and see what you get on with but anyway i hope that kind of helps with um a bit of improvisation and a bit of blues stuff <laughs> just play around with it it's so much fun i love doing sort of bluesy scale stuff um color of the devil's the only one i've recorded so far um that i've written but I, i've got a couple of other songs that are quite bluesy um one that's going to be coming out on my next ep um that song's called whiskey feet and uh, and that also uses some um uh, <laughs> some of these sort of chords and and sounds and stuff um and i've got another one called devil's mistress which will probably be on the following album but anyway yeah it's, it's pretty cool to um just make yourself a little riff use some of those chords make something up for yourself or you know if you just like i say want to throw it into a regular tune but do a bluesy kind of chorus um that's that's quite cool as well like we did with this train's bound for glory so have a go <laughs> When I do that, uh, it's coming right up to the 12th fret. What would usually be the, it has to be the 14th now because I'm cap out at the minute, but it would usually be your 12th fret because um, that's your sort of octave up. So if you're in open G or whatever, you know, you can just ring out that. 
that chord and I have once tried to put the uh, the banjo through a fuzz pedal so you get that crazy like effect uh, you know like more of an electric guitar and stuff and it, it sounds pretty cool so there's all kinds of things you can do but um yeah cool have a go with it and I will see you soon as usual um you know just if you could like my um Banjo Gen social things and keep an eye on those and my other Banjo Gen YouTube channel uh, that just helps independent artists like me and um, so that would be cool and a big thank you as well actually to people who have donated recently a few people have um, put some money in the PayPal account so that's that's really nice thank you I'll always keep these lessons free um, but you know if you feel like you're able to chuck a few quid in that's you know it's always appreciated it's amazing when people do that so thank you to those kind people who have and uh, uh, yeah hope you're all okay hope to get to some live gigs soon <laughs> all right folks see you later